So all of heaven is watching the earth all the time, looking for a man or a woman that's going to use the Word of God, that's going to speak the Word of God, that's going to move on the Word of God. And when they do, heaven moves. Hello, everyone. God bless you today, and welcome to Terry Mize Ministries program. We're just delighted to have you, and we've been talking about some wonderful things you were preaching on in a church right here in the state of Texas. And today, as you can tell, we're out here in beautiful Hill Country, Texas, Lano, Texas, and we're talking about these great things that we found from the Word of God. And we are the talking about the stones that Terry has been preaching on here in the last several sessions. Yeah, taught out of the book of First Samuel. Yeah, where David beat Goliath, chapter seven. And uh, he stopped and he picked up five smooth stones, and we we said that those stones were the blood, and the word, and the name, and the covenant, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And uh, in every situation, those Got them right here. you're going to have to use. Yeah, Renee's had some made up, and and you can find them on our website if you want to get you a set of. These are real yes. leather pouches. Uh, it's a tool, and you can just remind yourself. Well, there, there, there's the there's the name. That's and right. there's the blood, and there's the word, and and you use those things succinctly. Right. And over and over, when I had the hitchhiker sticking the, the gun in my, right. in my belly, right. I said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Right. You know, I, I plead the blood against you. Uh, God's a covenant God, and so you go always go back to those same tools. That's right. Uh, to get this done. So anyway, we're enjoying ourselves in in Hill Country of Texas because it's blue bonnet time, and we're seeing the great blue bonnets. <laughs> And uh, yeah, the state while flower. we're here, we just thought we'd do an outdoor program and, and wanted to share this great message we did. And today will be the, the final uh, segment of that, and uh, you'll be able to win every time. That's right. You know, when you, when you remind yourself of what's in your arsenal, the name, the blood, the word, the covenant, the power of the Holy Spirit, stay on track. And you always said, Terry... Do it again. <laughs> that, that's and the secret sauce. That's that's the that's key. it right there. Just do it again and do it again and do it again and, and you do it till you win. It's not a nine in a ball game. We play we win. That's right. Stay tuned. You're going to learn something. When Goliath made his speech, the Bible says he made it how many times a day? Twice a day. Twice a day. How many days he been doing this? Forty days when David got there. So how many times have they heard it? 80 times. Send me a man that we may fight. If I kill him, we'll be your servants. And if he kills me, we'll be your servants. 80 times. And it's got down in their spirit. They've heard it morning. They've heard it night. 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 But they're macho. They got the medals to prove it. They got battle scars to prove it. Yeah. You read about those guys. You read about those guys. They were some warriors, man. I mean, they, they had won war after war, battle after battle. I mean, up close and personal. You know, right? Yes, sir. And so David shows up and begins to talk to his brothers and the, the captain. And here comes Goliath. He makes the same speech. Let's, let's pick it up. Verse 22, David left his carriage the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran to the army and came and saluted his brethren. As he talked with them, behold, there came the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name out of the armies of the Philistines. And he spake according to the same words. What does that mean? It means he said the same thing he said 79 other times. Yes, sir. This is the 80th time. <clears throat> and David heard them. But notice when David heard them, that did not stir him up. That did not stir up righteous indignation. That did not make him think, I've got to go defend God. I'm going to go kill that guy. He didn't say anything. It didn't affect him at all. Verse 24, and all the men of Israel heard. All the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. 
Now, verse 11 tells, them, tells us they were afraid. Verse 24 tells us they were afraid. All the men of Israel. And so they fled. They went and jumped in the foxhole. And the men of Israel said, have you seen, they're talking to David, have you seen this man that's come up, question, surely to defy Israel he's come up, statement, and it will be, it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches, give him his, his daughter to marry, and make his father's house free in Israel. And David's ears perked up. His ears didn't perk up when the bad guy was just, cursing God. His ears perked up when he heard, you get to marry the princess? You get great riches? Now remember, he's a shepherd boy watching the sheep, man. What, what chance is a shepherd boy watching the sheep got to marry the princess and get great riches and your father's house be free in Israel? None. Zero. Are you here? And David, so, so he's, heard, he's heard it now from the giant one time. He's heard the reward from the men one time. And David spake to the men that stood by him saying, uh, what did you say shall be done to the man that kills this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? So he's asked him to repeat it once. He's heard it once. He's asked him to repeat it once. And then he tells him why he knows he can kill the guy. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Now, what does uncircumcised mean to a Christian? Uncovenant. No covenant. Every one of those men, Saul and everybody in his armies, were circumcised on the eighth day they were born. They all had a covenant with Almighty God. Now, circumcision is not the covenant, by the way. God said it's the token of the covenant. Like the rainbow, people say, oh, that's the covenant of God. No, no. The Bible says when God put the rainbow in the sky, he said this is the token of the covenant. This reminds you of the covenant. It's a symbol of the covenant. It's the seal of the covenant. It's the signature of the covenant. When you see that rainbow, you can think, ah, oh, God made a covenant. Amen. And so when David says uncircumcised Philistine, I can actually hear his disdain in his voice. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this loser? Who is this man without a covenant that he should defy the armies of the living God? How dare him? But yet that wasn't what pulled his ears up. It was the reward. And then one thing led to the other. And the people, verse 27, the people answered him after the, this manner saying, so shall it be done to the man that kills him. So now they've told him twice. He's heard it once. Now he's heard it twice. And he's asking him to repeat it once. Right? Yes, and Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, why comest thee here down hither? And with who have you left those few sheep? Can't you just hear a wee big brother? He's disdaining David. He even calls, he even calls the sheep flock those few sheep. <laughs> who have you left those few sheep with? Excuse me. And, and um, David said, why? Isn't there, isn't there, isn't, well, he went on to say, I know the naughtiness of your heart and blah, 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 blah. You've come down to see the battle. There's not a battle. And so David said, what have I done now? Is there not a cause? And he turned his back on his big brother, just turned his back and turns to somebody else and asked him. It says he, he turned his back and he spake after the same manner. So David's asked now the second time. Uh, tell me again. Yeah. Tell me again what will be done to the guy that kills him. And so for the third time, they're thinking he's pretty dense by now. No wonder he's keeping the sheep. <laughs> and so he turned toward another and spake after the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former man. This is the third time they've told him. He's asked him to repeat it twice. So there's no mistake about any of this. There should be no mistake about us understanding what's going on here. Come on, come on. Yeah. <laughs> and when the words were heard which David spoke, they told Saul, and Saul sent for him. And David came in, verse 32, and said, Don't let any man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go, I'll go, and fight with this Philistine. 
And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. You're just a youth, and he's a man of war from his youth. Now notice in this entire story, David never one time gave this warrior any credence or credibility or honor. He never called him a giant, never, not once. Never called him a giant, never called him a warrior, never called him anything except a loser. He only referred to him as an uncovenanted man. Now what David's thinking in his brain is, I can't imagine this Saul or my brothers or somebody hadn't realized they can do this. Because it didn't meet it fights, it's God. And they used to know that, but they grew up. David still knows it because he's out there sitting playing that harp, thinking about it. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. David's thinking in his head, I, gotta, I better go do this before somebody else does. Yeah. Yeah. One of these guys is going to wake up. Yeah. Yeah. One of these woke guys are really going to wake up. <laughs> so David says to Saul, your servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And as I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth, took it right out of his mouth. He rose up against me. I caught him by his beard and killed him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them. Graveyard dead. Right? Seeing that he's defied the armies of the living God. And David continued and said, The Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he might deliver me. If it's his will, or the Lord willing, well, I hope, no, no, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. Boy, he said that with power, with unction, with authority. He will. The same God that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from this uncovenanted loser. Yeah. Come on. And that stirred Saul up a little bit, so he said, well, go. Now Saul's riding a lot on this bit. He's putting a lot on this pony right here. And he rose up and said, well, bless you, son. The Lord be with thee. Lord, he didn't believe the Lord's going to be with him. Yeah. If he did, he'd have gone and done it himself. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> that, that, that story of the lion and the bear is, it has, has become a famous, famous painting. If you look on that 25-pound Bible you got on your coffee table, it's got some religious paintings in it. It'll be one of them. Uh, the original painting is in the Louvre in, in Paris. And, um, and it shows the, David's back. You're looking at David's back. And he's got his sling like this. And the lion and the bear off over there about 30, 40 yards with the sheep. So the implication there is David's about to hit him with the, with the stone. But that's not what David's it. He's sitting there just praising the Lord and playing that harp. And he hears, meh, meh. <laughs> And he looks around, and there the, there the lion got the sheep, bears got it. And he jumps up, throws that harp down, jumps up, runs out there. Put that sheep down. That's my daddy's sheep. You're not taking that sheep. And they turn around and look at him, and he went and got to it and took it out of his mouth. And then it rose against him. He said, I caught him by his beard and killed him. I like this kid. I like this kid. But see how Bible mythology gets started? Yeah. Beautiful painting, famous painting. The sinners that go to the Louvre and see the painting think that's what happened. Yeah. Yeah. It becomes Bible mythology. It gets built into the Bible story. Yeah. Go ahead. Come on. But that's not what happened. Right. So anyway, David, where are we at? I'm, I'm 10 after. Let me, let me wrap this up. Um, so David went out, went out to face Goliath, and you know the story. Goliath looked around, saw David. Uh, in verse 42, he disdained him, uh, for he's but a youth and ruddy and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his demon gods. That's a mistake. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me. And I'll give your flesh to the fowl of the air and to the beast of the field. 
Boy, that just put fear in somebody, wouldn't it? Yeah. Big old boy like this, got a guy carrying his sword. Yeah. If you go to the first few verses of this chapter, it tells you how much his helmet weighed and how, much his, how big his spear was and his sword and his shield was and the, the male armor that he had on him. There's a lot of stuff. David's got his sandals and a sling. <laughs> Amen? Amen. But now back up here in verse 40, it says that David took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had. And his sling was in his hand. Now, now all my life, I've been saved since I was six. I've heard lots of sermons on David and Goliath. I, I, I've heard preachers say all kind of different things about the five smooth stones. You know, somebody said one time that David knew Goliath had four brothers and he was going to take care of them too. I don't know. And I just asked the Lord one time, years and years and years ago, I said, Lord, what's the deal with the five smooth stones? Is there any significance to that? And God didn't speak this to me, but it came up in my spirit. I heard it in my spirit. And he said, those five smooth stones are the name and the blood and the word and the covenant and the power of the Holy Spirit. It was the power of the Holy Spirit that made those bullets do whatever they did. They didn't hit me, didn't hit my car behind me. I don't know where they went. Yeah. Amen? You understand what I'm saying to you? Yeah. Now, pretty much the most important scripture in this whole story, you need to circle this, but lines and bells and whistles and whatever you do in your Bible by it. But the most important is verse 45. Then said David to the Philistine. There must be a then says you. Yeah, come on. Now see, David cursed him by his gods, by his demon gods. And you can't stop that. You need to understand that. You cannot stop the devil from cursing you. He's going to talk. He's going to say, I'll get you this time. You got out of it last time. This time I'll kill you. I'll kill your wife. I'll kill your babies. I'll kill your husband. I'll kill your kids. I'll kill your grandkids. I'll destroy your business. I'll destroy your marriage. You can't stop that. You can't stop that. No. Right. But there needs to be a then says you. Yes. Then says me. Amen. Yeah. That's a must. That's absolutely a must. You must. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you dare be silent. Don't you dare get embarrassed because your mother-in-law is there, or your grandparents are there, or your friends are there, and you might be embarrassed. No, you better have a then says me. Then said David to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and a spear and a shield, but I come to you in what? In the name. See, when I preached this before over the years, they said, oh, now, Brother Terry, Jesus didn't have the name. I mean, David didn't have the name. He's, that's the Old Testament. I said, he, he says I come to you in the name. You think he didn't have the name? He had a bunch of names. You know how many names God has? I come to you in the name. Come on. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know, when I'm, when I'm fighting sickness, I come in the name of Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, my healer. When I'm needing some money, I call on Jehovah Jireh, the Lord, my provider. El Shaddai, the God that's more than enough. When I need some sleep, oh, Father, I call on Jehovah Shalom, my peace, yes. that I will both lay me down and sleep, for thou keep me in perfect peace, because my mind is stayed upon you. Yes. Amen? Yes. And I call on that, this one a whole lot, yes. Jehovah Sabah, or Saboath, yes. the, Lord of, the Lord of the host, the captain the general of angel armies. Go ahead. Father, you're the, you're the captain of the host. You're the leader of the host. You're the general of the host. And I've got some enemies coming against me. Send a platoon. Yeah. Send a company. Send a squad. Lord of I call on you, the Lord of hosts, yeah. to deal with these enemies. Yeah. You know, October the 7th, you know the horrible... Th atrocities that happened in Israel. The Israelis used to know these scriptures. 
They used to know. They used to know about Jehovah Sabah. And when Hamas came in and took a, we, we just had a little brand new grandbaby, just brand new. Six pounds when she was born. And those guys would have held her up and cut her head off. Now that's evil. There is nothing military about that. There's nothing war about that. There's nothing. That's just evil. That's just demon, devil, evil. And uh, I pray for Hamas. I hope you're praying for Israel. I pray for Hamas. I pray for Hezbollah. I pray for the Houthis. I pray for, you know, the radical Islamist terrorists. I pray for Al-Qaeda, for ISIS. You know how I pray? I pray like David prayed against his enemies. Lord, break their teeth. (laughs) Smite their cheeks. Kill them dead. Take them out. Take them out. You ought to hear me and Renee pray. We pray ugly. We, we, we pray mean. We pray mean. You know, some, 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 Christ, some goofy Christians would have rebuked David because he killed Goliath. Come on. Yeah, go ahead. Yep. Let's just pray for him. No, yep. he's going to hell. Send him early. Yep. <laughs> Let me help him on his way. Yeah. Come on. Give me that mealy mouth, goofy stuff. This is Texas. You ought to know better. You have to know how to pray against the wicked. That's exactly right. Now, I seriously pray that way. Renee does too. And in our administration in Washington, D.C., tells Israel, show restraint. You show restraint. They just murdered those babies, cut their heads off of an infant. And you want me to show restraint? <laughs> yeah, you give me five minutes with them. <laughs> You understand what I said? There needs to be a then says you. So he said, I come to you in the name. You come with a sword. and I come in the name. See, David had the name, right? And he said, uh, the God of the armies of Israel. See, he said, I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Who's that? Jehovah Sabah. The God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. In this day... Will the Lord deliver you into my hand and I will smite you and take your head off your shoulders and I'll give the carcasses of the host of the Philistine this day to the fowls of the air and the beasts, wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know there's a God in Israel. You know, Israel's won the six day war. They won the Yom Kippur war. They won everything that's ever come against them and they better go back to these scriptures. Those scriptures would have saved their life on October 7th. Those scriptures would have stopped Hezbollah, I mean Hamas in their tracks. But they grew up. I've been to Israel, some of y'all have too. They they grew up. Now it's very secular, very, you know. Are y'all here? And he says, and all this assembly shall know that the Lord saves not with the sword and the spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Yeah. Well, where did he get Hallelujah. that? Where did he get that? Hallelujah. Out there meditating those Old Testament yeah. scriptures in yeah. First Chronicles 20, where it says, the battle is not yours, but the Lord. The Lord will fight your battle for you. Yeah. So he came to him in the name. He came to him in the blood. He came to him in the... I've had people say, no, Brother Terry, he didn't have the blood of Jesus. Well, no, he didn't have the blood of Jesus, but he had the blood sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. Every year, every year, every year, every year, the priest would take a goat that they call the scapegoat. Yeah. And he would symbolically put his hands on that goat's head for the sin, putting the sins of the nation on that goat, apply the blood, yes. cut that lamb's throat and get the blood. Every covenant's about blood. And then send that scapegoat off out in the wilderness. The Bible says, to be eaten of the wild animals. And then your sins, as an Israeli, as a Jew, your sins were atoned for or covered up for one year. It had, it had an expiration date. It was good for 365 days. And then they had to do it again. 
And they had to do it again. Then they had to do it again, right? But when Jesus came and the New Testament came, then atonement was done away with. We, I, have pre, I hear preachers preach all the time that we have the atonement. No, we don't. They had the atonement in the Old Covenant, but in the New Testament it says you have the remission of sins. Yes. Remission means wiped away, washed out, forgotten about, doesn't exist. Yeah. Come on. You don't have an expiration date. Yes. Amen. Come on. You apply the blood, of the, the blood of the Old Testament, it was good for a year. You apply the blood of Jesus, it's good forever. Just like your prayers, your prayers have no expiration date. They're deathless. Yes. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Pray, prayers, prayers out, outlive the life of the prayer. Yes. Yes. You better be praying for your grandkids that aren't born yet, your great grandkids that aren't born yet, your great great grandkids that aren't born yet, because when you die, those prayers will still be working. Go ahead. Come on. Get your Hallelujah. So you know the story. He slung the stone. Goliath fell over on his face. David jumped up on his back, pulled his own sword out, glass sword, cut it off, cut off the head. Took the bloody thing, hair, teeth, and eyeballs back up to King Saul and said, I don't think he'll bother you anymore. Yeah. And then just like a teenager, well, I guess I do the same thing, so maybe not like a teenager. He went and hung the head on his wall of his tent. Yeah. You go in my office, you know, and you'll see deer heads up there and ducks and pheasant and you know, all kind of stuff I've shot or my boys have shot. Well, that's what David, you walk in David's tent, is it? <laughs> then says you. He used the blood. He used the name. He used the word. He used the covenant. And he used the power of the Holy Spirit. The power, the power. He couldn't have done that without the power of the Holy Ghost. Darling, that was awesome. This has been a wonderful series. It's been a good series. Yeah. How to win word. every time. Yeah. <laughs> it's not always just a good word, it works. No, that's right. It absolutely Imagine that. <laughs> you know, every time you're in a crisis situation, every time you're in a crisis situation, you're going to have to fight. That's right. You can't, you can't back down. And to do that, we've given you five smooth stones. We've, That's right. We've given you the name of Jesus. That's right. We've given you the blood. That's because right. Because God's, uh, uh, we have a bloody God, a bloody religion, and a bloody covenant. That's it's right. a blood covenant. And then the word, you always got to use the word. And then the covenant, God's a covenant God. He always, he's the faithful God that keeps the covenant. And then the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We've made these, these, these are real rocks. I mean, they're heavy. You can put them on your desk and just look at them as a reminder every time you get in the situation. That's I've right. got to use the name. I've got to use the word. I've got to use, got to use the blood. And uh, this whole series on, on you can win every time. Those are the tools that you have to use. And as we said at the first of the program and all the way through, it's going to be the secret sauce or the, the catch phrase is do it again. Do it again. Once you do it, do it again and do it do again it. and do it again do it. until you win. That's right. Well, one more time, we're going to tell you, you are more than cultures. <laughs>